everyone. It's George Kroos with another episode of the Innovators Mindset podcast. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I appreciate you being here and taking the time to listen. And uh, I was supposed to have a meeting, but I uh, had to switch things around. So I decided I'm going to record a podcast, right? And kind of thinking about kind of how easy that is to do. Um, I just actually loaded up Zoom, have my mic set up, ready to go. And then I'm going to upload it. And think about how kind of powerful that is, that opportunity that we can share a voice that can go to multiple platforms. And sharing it actually brought me to an article um, that I had written previously that I kind of wanted to talk about today. And the title of the article is quite long. It's, as technology becomes easier to use, our depth of learning needs to continue to increase. And the whole premise of the article is the idea that <clears throat> technology, we, we often hear, you know, like, oh, our kids, like they're so much better than technology than, you know, than we were as kids. And I actually don't agree with that. And uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I, when I was growing up, I had an Apple IIc. And it was a pretty cool device at the time. But there wasn't much you could do with it. And I actually uh, knew something about programming at the time. Could, you know, run these, create these little programs. You'd write like 10 something, 20. I can't remember how to do it. But I used to know how to do it. And you spend all this time going through coding and, and, and doing these little things just to get like a minimal reaction out of that computer. And I feel that at the time, you had to know a lot to be able to do a little. And now it's kind of the opposite, is that if you know a little, there's, there's a lot you can do. There, there isn't much um, here um, with this podcast to kind of put it together, to put it on, like I said, to multiple platforms. And if you think about this, uh, you think about like when we were kids and or I guess like at least when I was a kid, when you, you know, buy something, the instructions, you know, how complicated they were to try to learn to use a new technology. And you think about the iPhone, right? And most people don't even realize this because it's just not something we talk about is that the iPhone doesn't even come with instructions. That's how easy it is to use, right? It's got a, a, a few buttons, screen kind of tells you what to do right at the beginning. And that accessibility makes it really, really powerful. And I think about, um, you know, as a kid growing up, my mom, she had really no interest in using an Apple IIc, but she would actually, right now, she FaceTimes me all the time. Uh, she connects with me, writes me emails, text messages, um, things that you know are commonplace to her that she's comfortable with. And I always tell the story is that uh, my mom actually really didn't start learning to read and write English until later. And she's become a lot better because of her use of like things like Facebook and email. My mom's Facebook is probably the most sporadic <laughs> thing you'll ever read. It's very random. Uh, but it's interesting to kind of keep up with her in that space. And she goes from this point where she actually, um, you know, has really, you know, as an immigrant to Canada has learned to read and write English to where now she can make me feel guilty, like solely through the use of emoticons. And she'll text me like, why don't you ever call me phone broken heart tears? And it's kind of funny to see how good she is with this stuff. And, and then we talk about like our kids are so good with this stuff, but I think they're just taking advantage of all the opportunities that we have. If you see, um, you know, TikTok editing, um, some of the stuff that they do, how easy it is to get a message across the world. We didn't have access to that. And I think that it makes me feel um, like because it's easier, we should be doing better things with it. We should be you know, focus more on a depth of learning. And I, I think about like how much you had to know to do something that would be really simple now. And I'll give you an example. When I was a kid, uh, we were in uh, Eric Bellamy, Mr. Bellamy was my teacher. And it was one of my favorite projects ever, to be honest with you. He actually made us do like 60 second commercials. And I'm a huge basketball fan, uh, go Raptors. And uh, I, I, we wanted to make um, a, a commercial for a new shoe. And we got out like a giant camera we had, you know, on, a, on this tripod that was super heavy and you had to do all these things. Uh, at the time, you actually had to plug the camera into the VCR real time. Some of the, you know, later on, it was pretty cool because the, 
you can just put the tape right into the camera, which was like a huge invention at the time. And uh, we did this video to, um, I got the power by snap where I jump off a springboard. You can't see the springboard because we cut it out of the shot. Uh, and dunk a basketball. And I totally give credit to my awesome new basketball shoes. And thinking about how fun that was and how terrible the quality was of that video and, and really interesting to kind of think about is that it was so hard to edit that video. There was so much stuff you had to do. There was like multiple sheets. I honestly cannot even remember how we edited it. I can't remember like all the things we had to do. All I knew was that the amount of time that it took to put that together, to record it, it was like a few days of a process of class time to do this. That same video now, I could probably do within 30 minutes easily, add music to it. And I, like 30 minutes is because I don't do a ton of video editing. Uh, you know, thinking about taking a video, capturing that. And will I do that same, t you know, same level of video or will I do like, you know, lots of image, like uh, editing and things like that. And so it's become a lot easier to utilize these things, but it, it actually doesn't necessarily um, make us more knowledgeable with this technology or even more knowledgeable. And there is a really funny video and I'll link to it uh, by a comedian named Pete Holmes. And he talks about uh, this idea that the ability that we have act, you know, to Google anything that we want. And he shares like the ability to go from knowing or not knowing to knowing is so small that it, you can literally Google anything. And he uses the example of like, where's Tom Petty from? And, and how that, when you're a kid, you would just have to wonder, but now I can know in, you know, half a second through a Google search and that wonder is taken away. And so we know this and, you know, when, when we say like, Hey, uh, kids can Google any information and there's this huge kind of, push like, oh, you know, we don't have to teach kids skills because they're just going to, you know, we don't have to have kids have knowledge because they can just Google it. I don't agree with that at all. I think it's what we do with our knowledge that's really important, right? Uh, I actually, one of my favorite things to read as a kid was the dictionary, or sorry, not the dictionary, the encyclopedia. We actually had a set of encyclopedias at my house as a kid, and I just used to like randomly flip and try to find interesting things uh, to learn about. And now, you have more than an encyclopedia can, can ever provide to you in your pocket at all times. And that's something that's quite powerful, but what do we do with it? How do we utilize this stuff? And, you know, as people have gone, um, you know, the last obviously few months with COVID and, and I think one of the things I've seen that I'm, I'm really, I think is powerful um, is, is watching people utilize uh, this technology to really build relationships. And, you know, many people have been isolated, they've been able to connect and it's, it's, it's quite powerful. And in this blog post I shared, you know, technology uh, is easier for this generation of students than it was for us. In many ways, this generation is better at technology than the previous generation, probably due to the accessibility, right? Uh, so many more people have access to these technologies, like having an Apple IIc in the kid was pretty rare. We were very lucky to have that as a family. Uh, and now you see, you know, so many people have uh, these devices and connected. And so really do we focus on deep learning through this process? And I know that this video is something that's easy to capture. Um, this audio is easier to capture and to share with the entire world. For me, the real learning is not in the technology, it's in talking these ideas out, having a blog, writing about this, really trying to understand different perspectives, how people think differently and knowing that an audience can actually read my thoughts makes me more um, take what I call a 360 degree view. Like what is going to be the pushback? What is going to be the challenge to my ideas? And trying to think about that. So the actual use of the blog, the actual, you know, use of this podcast to share my ideas, that's not for me where the learning comes from, right? It's processing these ideas, talking them out, trying to think about different perspectives as I'm sharing these things. 
And really, when we use technology, and you see, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, like, you know, we use things like Kahoot in the classroom. Is that like a fun thing? Or is that really to, to focus on depth of knowledge, depth of learning? And um, in the original post, I, I actually shared a quote from a gentleman named Blake Harvard, Blake Harvard, and he, uh, he wrote a post called A Focus on Learning, Not Fun. And he shared this and he says, recently I've become more concerned with the ties among three words and their use in the classroom, fun, engagement, and learning. Seeing more and more teachers comment on creating fun lessons that engage students. I don't know if there's anything too terribly wrong with that premise, as long as learning remains the focus. I fear, however, that upon reflection of a lesson, fun becomes a measuring stick of the lesson's success and learning takes a backseat or becomes almost an option for the lesson. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Um, sometimes I've got caught up in the, you know, the, the glitz and glamour of the technology and focusing on like this really cool thing we can do. But, you know, as <laughs> I've grown in my own learning, really trying to experience like what are the opportunities that we have as learners uh, is really thinking about like how do we focus on depth? And one of the things that I've talked about quite a bit lately is that when we, when we talk about innovation, are we focused on just doing new things all the time or are we focus on better? And in the innovator's mindset, um, I actually define innovation as a way of doing new and better things. But I make it very clear that if it is not better, it is not innovation, right? Like I talk about innovation as like an iteration or an invention. And sometimes the iteration is the part we need to focus on. So for example, uh, the ability to blog, to share this, to share my ideas, to write these ideas. I don't spend any time going over the technical aspects anymore. They're just commonplace. They're the same as me picking up a pen. But the little tweaks, the little things I do, how I capture my information, how I find this information. And I'll tell you, like, I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about this notion of like how technology is becoming easier to use. And I actually Googled my own work. And it took me half a second. Then I actually Googled the Pete Holmes video that I mentioned. It took me half a second. But now having a conversation, thinking about this, thinking about what does it mean for the classroom? What does it mean for schools? That's where the learning happens. It's not all the cool tech. Just we have more opportunities for deep knowledge through technology. We have more opportunities to create because of technology. Do we take access, advantage of that? Do we take access? Like, you know, when you Google something, I always say this, and uh, this has been shared by many people, it's not finding information that's important. It's actually what you do with it. So as you're looking at this, as you're sharing and, and you're listening to this, I, like I, I always encourage people to like, hey, you know, write your own ideas down, process this. It's easy to consume these podcasts. But really, if you want really powerful learning, you have access to these ideas, what do you actually create with this? What do you utilize this stuff or utilize when we're creating this? And one of the things that I do, uh, like I say I'm attending a conference, attending a session, I get so much more out of the session when I step away and I blog about the ideas, when I do a podcast on something that I learned, because it gives me that time to really process deeply. And yes, we have access to more knowledge than we've ever had before. And obviously we gotta learn how to like filter, you know, understand if, is this information good? Those are all skills that are becoming more and more uh, important as we get more and more access to not only ideas, but to each other. But really when you think about this idea, what we do with the information is the most important. What we do with the technology is most important. And as we continue to grow, this statement will always be true. As the years go on, the technology will become easier. What we do with it and how we utilize it is gonna be the most important thing. So just a few thoughts, just wanna do like a random podcast, share some ideas. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'd love to hear your comments uh, in, the, in YouTube comments below. So thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.